Welcome back to our series on great themes in Yitziat Mitzrayim. And it, it's hard to have a series without talking about the major themes, uh, not just of the Seder, but of Pesach itself. And if we think about Shabbos as being, you know, Zachar and Shamar, we think about Pesach as being Matzah and Chametz. And they are, in fact, flip sides of each other. And it's the case that we love Matzah and we, we don't really love Chametz. And I find chametz confusing because I suppose if the Torah didn't like chametz, the Torah should have prohibited chametz. The Torah doesn't like nevela and doesn't like trefa and doesn't like basar b'chalav. And so they're prohibited all the time. But the Torah doesn't like chametz apparently only for one week of the year. Do we like chametz? Do we hate chametz? What's our attitude towards chametz? Well, t today is, isn't Pesach, so today I like chametz a lot. Okay. And it's not just that the Torah forbids chametz once a year. Chametz on Pesach is more strict, more severe. The Isur is, in many ways, deeper than the Isurim that you mentioned the whole year. T the Torah in the beginning of Pesachim connects the Isur of Bal Yira'er, Bal Yimatzei, to, and, and the Chiyah Midu Abanan of B'dika, to the fact that chametz is, in effect, more uh, a stricter iso. It's a very strict iso. It is iso uh, karet. But aside from that, um, chametz doesn't exist on Pesach. You're not allowed. You're not allowed to have it in your world. That's the real meaning of barei bayimatzei. Is not just to you know take it outside. The way the Rambam explains on daf <coughs> is that chametz in your in your mind does not exist. Lo lecha. It shouldn't exist. Lo yimatzei lecha. It doesn't exist as far as we're concerned. It should be a foul ba'alma, which is why beetle beetle could work, uh, and that's really extraordinary. In other words, pigs exist, and you can look at them. Uh, frankly, you could even own one, uh, but chametz you not have it all. But only, as you said, only for one week. So there is a uh, there is a certain idea that appears in the late Jewish uh, thinking that chametz is really very very bad. It represents the Eight Sahara, but... Uh, Soor Sheba'isa. Soor Sheba'isa, that's the expression. But the Torah didn't ask for it the whole year because uh, you, have to, you have to live with the Eight Sahara, but once a year you should get rid of it. I don't think that's true. Um, we can see there's one very simple point. Chametz is, Chametz is wonderful. And we know that because uh, Pesach leads to Shavuot, and in Shavuot there's a korban of Chametz Te'afena. It has to be Chametz, and that's... Shavuot, that's Matan Torah, and it's connected to Pesach. Uh, specifically, the mitzvah of the Omer, which is Barley. not Chametz, brought on Pesach, is what you count 50 days from to get to the mitzvah of Shtei Alechem, of, uh, of the Mincha. If you look in the Torah, it doesn't say that Shavuot is 50 days after Pesach. It says that the Minchat Shtei Alechem, which is Lechem, is 50 days after the Minchat Mincha Omer. So actually, chametz is a wonderful thing. But chametz is impossible on Pesach for the reasons that we discussed in our previous uh, discussions. Uh, Pesach is about, is about freedom. And freedom is, first of all, a negative experience. Secondly, it's a positive experience. The positive experience is Torah. But when you take away the restrictions of Egypt, of Paro, you are liable to simply have unregulated growth in a million different directions, which frankly, historically, is the danger and the, to some extent, the, um, the defeat, the, uh, the, the evil side of freedom. When you have freedom in a purely negative sense, which is what political freedom means in the Western world, inevitably, it leads to moral corruption. It's unfortunate and it scares a lot of people. Uh, but it happens, because you can do anything, so therefore a lot of things express. The, the Sa'ar Sheba'isa, the Yed Sahara, takes over, and it goes in a million directions, there's no direction. The Torah says that when you've achieved freedom, you have to stand still until you learn how to grow. And therefore, that's what Chametz represents. Chametz represents an amazing, amazing thing, that is, more comes from less, that there's growth. You take a little bit of water, a little bit of flour, and Half an hour later, you have this growing, this growing thing. The fact that it grows is the goal of Torah, that you should be growing, you should be coming closer to God, you should be coming greater day by day by day by day. But in order to do that, you have to be free. But when you're free, you're liable to become a, a melange of, of 
conflicting and, and negative and, and even uh, decadent, uh, decadent things. So the, the, the act of leaving slavery, it should be accompanied with, let's just see what we have. Just, just first knowing what you have and not letting the forces of growth immediately express until they've been put into a misgev, into, into a, uh, a framework of Torah and mitzvot. So on Shavuot, when you've got in the Torah, the Torah doesn't come to, as we pointed out, to restrict you. It comes to restrict you. It doesn't come to turn you into a slave. It turns, turns you into being free by being a slave to God. When you have the framework, then, then the leavening should begin to take place because it will grow in the right direction. Is that the key of matzah then? The, the halakhic definition of matzah is, is potential or aborted chametz. There's a halacha that says that it's not considered to be matzah if it couldn't have been chametz. Right. In other words, if you made it impossible for it to become chametz, then it's not matzah either. Exactly. Matzah is, it has the potential to grow, but we eat it quickly. Below his fecal. You have to eat it before the process begins. The process is potentially true, but hasn't begun. Because in order to begin, we have to, we have to wait for Shavuot. But the goal of Jewish existence is is to get the Shavuot. Yes, it's to afterwards, it's to, yes, it's to eat, it's to eat chametz. Uh, there's, as you know, this machlok at halach the ma'isa, whether the whole year uh, matzah even counts as being, uh, as being su'uda, as being, as being lechem. Uh, many of us are Ashkenazim, and we don't have a problem with it, but uh, the Beit Yosef uh, says you can't make a hamotzi on matzah, because uh, it's not real bread. It's only bread for Pesach. It's deficient bread. It's lechem only. There's no mitzvah to be ani. There's a mitzvah to be an ani before you become an ashir. It's also nice then that every time you eat chametz, I'm sorry, every time you eat matzah, you're not eating chametz, right? It's binary. There's only one or the other. And when I sit down and I eat matzah, it's ki'ilu, I'm saying, the rest of the year I would have been eating chametz. But right now... I heard of that. We eat, we eat chametz. We're not embarrassed. We're not embarrassed. We're proud. We've gone back to the origins. Mm-hmm. And the origins, you have to be aware. This is true what you asked me about why we started in a strange land. And it's true why we started in slavery. And we also start in, in nothing. We start in not being developed because the, the potential to develop is based on the fact that you're undeveloped. So first we have to experience what being undeveloped is and then directing your development in an infinite ad ki The development is to be like God. That's the essential nature of chimutz, of fermentation. Fermentation means development, new ideas, new things happening. But you have to know to experience what it means not to have in order to be able to continue. So seven days, pure freedom, pure freedom is dangerous. So you have to first control it and then and then go wow. on. Right, a, a really beautiful idea. I appreciate very much you sharing ideas with me, with us. Chag, have a chag kasheh v'sameach. Ma'od bari. Amen. With our children and our grandchildren and our friends and parents and brothers and sisters. Amen. Shalom l'kulam.